time to make some pasta. Huh. I could have sworn the cook time on this was different. Now I know the cook time on this was different. Something weird is going on around here. We better call Barilla. Thank you for contacting us. We're glad you called. Please listen to the following menu. For Barilla, please press one. For Catelli, Lancia. Buongiorno, grazie per aver chiamato Barilla. Thank you for calling Barilla. Your call may be recorded for quality purposes. Please hold for the next available representative. Grazie. Hello, this is uh, Donatello with Barella. How can I help you? Hello, Donatello. I want to know why you're trying to ruin my dinner. I noticed Barilla has changed multiple of the cook times on their boxes of pasta. And I want to know why are you are doing this and why are you trying to sabotage my dinner? Sir, I really don't appreciate the hostility. Hostility? You think I'm being hostile? I'll show you being hostile! Why are you doing this to me? Why? What have you been doing? Oh my god, he hung up on me. Let me tell you, Donatello, if you're watching this, your days are numbered. They definitely changed the cook time on this. I'm gonna get to the bottom of this right now. Hello and happy Thanksgiving! Welcome back to the side dish special of Cooking Corner with me, Giuseppe Cribbiroli. Today for you, we're going to be making a butternut squash mac and cheese to satisfy your taste buds on Thanksgiving. Now in terms of ingredients, you're going to need the following. You're going to need fresh thyme. You're going to need a butternut squash. You're going to need goat cheese. You're going to need whole milk. You're going to need garlic powder and ground black pepper. You're gonna need cayenne and butter. You're gonna need extra sharp cheddar cheese. You're also gonna need flour. And of course, you're gonna need some kind of pasta. I'm using Celentini, but you can use mezzi rigatoni, or farfalle, or cavatappi, or shells. The list goes on. What about spaghetti? Not spaghetti. Now in terms of hardware for this recipe, you're going to need the following. You're going to need a medium sized pot for your pasta. You're also going to need a strainer to strain your pasta. You're going to need a large knife and a thin spoon. You may need a whisk, it's not conclusive. You're going to need a large pan and various measuring spoons and a measuring cup. You're going to need a cutting board and a serving dish. And finally, you're going to need yourself a blender. I myself use the Margaritaville blender in honor of Jimmy Buffett. Rest in pepperoni. Step number one, as always, is going to be squash your hands. Go ahead, turn the water on, get your squash and your hands and get them both nice and moist. Once your hands and the squash are all wet, get yourself some soap. Squirt it on the squash, get some for your hands, squirt it on there. Then mix the soaps all over the squash and your hands. Get them all nice and soapy. Wow, it's very hard to handle. Use, use the squash like a bar of soap. Get it all nice and soapy and slippery. Stick it back into the water, wash all of that soap off. Once you get in, your squash and your hands are nice and clean, you can turn the water off. Shake them dry, grab yourself a towel, dry them off, and we're ready to cook. That's one wet squash. Yeah, I don't need you to tell me. I almost dropped it like five times. <laughs> Step number two is gonna be cut your squash. So go ahead, take your fancy little knife and cut both ends off of your butternut squash. Now 
now that you've cut the ends off your squash, you're going to cut it vertically, as in all the way down the squash until it's split completely in half. So go ahead, take your knife, place it squarely in the middle of the squash, and cut through it. Now, you can use a knife or a veggie peeler for this next part, but either one works. You want to take the skin off of the exterior of your squash so you're left with just the inside part. You may notice these parts right here that are a little bit white with the green stripes. You're going to want to try to get as much of that off as you can. So just keep going with your peeler until you remove as much of the white as you can get off. Now, when you successfully remove the skin from the outside of your squash, you're going to take a spoon and hollow out the middle as well. So just take your spoon, stick it in there, and remove the guts. Once you've got your peeled and hollowed out squash, you can start cutting it into cubes. So just put it down, take your knife, start trying to cut one inch cubes. You're only going to need about 20 ounces or 4 cups of cubed butternut squash. Our butternut squash ended up being a big one, so we only used half of it. Now, peeling and cubing a butternut squash is a huge pain in the ass. So, you can just buy pre-cubed butternut squash in the store. Moving on to step number 3. Step number 3 is going to be cook your butternut squash. Now, what you're going to need to do is add your 20 ounces of butternut squash into a pan and add a quarter cup of water to it. Then, you're going to turn this on medium-high heat and cook it until the water evaporates. It should be somewhere between 5 and 7 minutes. You want to be careful because once that water evaporates, the squash will start to burn. So I recommend watching it like a hawk. So, now that our water is evaporated, we can take the lid off and start making our roux. This is step number four. Now, what you're going to need to do is add a half stick or four tablespoons of butter into your pan with your squash and wait until it melts. Once the butter is melted, we'll continue. Once your butter is all melted, you're going to add a quarter cup of flour and mix it constantly to form a roux. This can be a bit challenging because of the butternut squash in the pan, but that's why you have a whisk and a spoon. So do your best to make the roux with the butternut squash in the pan. Ready? Once you've completed your roux by adding the flour and fully mixing it in with the butter and the squash, you're going to slowly pour in two cups of whole milk while mixing constantly. Go ahead and add it now. Once 
Once you've added your whole milk, you can turn the temperature down a bit, and now is a great time to put up your pot of water to boil for your pasta. It's important to know that you should cook your pasta for three minutes less than what it says on the box because once you add the cheese sauce to it, you're gonna cook it a little bit more. So make sure not to overcook your pasta. Now that your pasta water is up, you can continue with your squash mixture. The next thing you're gonna do is add your spices. This is step number six. You're gonna add a half teaspoon of garlic powder, a half teaspoon of cayenne, and a full teaspoon of fresh thyme. Then you're gonna mix it all up and bring it to a simmer. I smell how aromatic it is. Once you've attained a light simmer, you can promote your squash to a cheese sauce. This is step number seven. So, in order to promote your squash mixture, you're gonna to need to add four ounces of extra sharp cheddar, and four ounces of goat cheese, and you can mix them until they're all melted. Once you've fully incorporated your cheese into your squash mixture, you can take it off of the heat and let it cool down a second. So go ahead, take it off of the heat, let it cool. Once your squash mixture has cooled down considerably, you can add it to your blender and puree it until it's smooth. chunks of squash that just won't go down to the bottom of your blender and won't get incorporated. Just use a spoon and press them down and keep blending until it's smooth. Once you've strained your pasta, just put it back in the pot to keep it warm. We'll be adding the cheese sauce shortly. Once you've finished pureeing your cheese sauce, you can move on to step number eight. And step number eight is gonna be add your cheese to your pasta. So just go ahead, add your cheese sauce to your pasta, Mix it up and put it over low heat for three to five minutes. Time for the final step, which is gonna be plating. Now that your cheese sauce is at time to adhere to your pasta, you're gonna take your pasta and cheese sauce, some call it a mac and cheese, and add it to your serving dish. So go ahead and spoon it into your serving dish now. Now that it's in your serving dish, you're free to add any personal touches, like pretzel breadcrumbs or regular breadcrumbs. Now that you've added your mac and cheese to your serving plate, you can go ahead and serve yourself a big old bowl of it. So, get some of that good mac and transfer it into your eating receptacle. And just like that, you're ready to enjoy. Now it's time for a little taste test. Go ahead, grab your mac, grab your fork or spoon, and Get in there for a little bite. A little hot. Mm. That was delicious! That concludes this week's special side dish episode of Cooking Corner with Giuseppe Crimivroli. I hope you enjoyed the dish and I hope you have a happy Thanksgiving. If you like this video, leave a like below. If there's something you want to see on the channel, leave it in the comments and I'll try to make it for you. If you like videos like this, subscribe to my channel. I'm putting out new content all the time. Happy Thanksgiving and bye bye now. Now, it's important to note when making your pasta, you want to cook it for three minutes less than what it says on the box because it's going to cook a little bit with the cheese sauce. Um, are you going to heat the cheese sauce back up? It'll go on the hot pasta. Well, how is the cold cheese sauce going to cook the 
Yeah. Hot pasta is gonna be hot. It, it works, all right. <laughs> I don't know. You just said that the cheese sauce is gonna cook the pasta. Yeah, and it's not hot. It's it hot. It's just not scalding hot. Yeah, but wouldn't you it's... want it to be scalding hot to cook the pasta? You're very critical, all right. Well, you, ate, you, you ate everything I made today with no complaints. You said that the cheese sauce is gonna cook the pasta. Well, which right. Is so true. I want to make sure it's gonna cook the pasta. It's gonna cook the pasta. Okay. I don't believe you. I don't believe you either. Have I been wrong yet today about the food? No, you haven't, but I'm just saying that this might be the first. It'll just keep cooking because the pasta itself is hot. I don't think that's how pasta works. You don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I'm just saying. So why don't you always cook pasta that way? I do. <laughs> I always cook it, but whatever it says in the box, mine is too, because that's al dente pasta. Okay. Well, yeah, then just do that. Then just say that. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, no, because Barilla recently changed the times on their boxes. This is not the time that it used to be. They added time to it. And I, I realized it when I was looking at the angel hair and it said cook for five minutes. And I was like, if you cook the angel hair for five minutes, you're going to get a bowl of motion. Yeah. Well, what did they add time? I have no idea. You should reach out. 